Hi, I'm Tommy from Carrera Casting. In today's best practices, we're featuring machine maintenance and getting the most out of your 3D printers. In today's episode, we'll be covering pre-built prep for your 3D printer. So the job is done. We've done our post-build inspection. And now we need to load a new job. I'm going to take you through it in a general manner to show you what needs to be done so this machine will work well. So first thing we need to do, clean the only thing that touches our parts, which is the cutter. A bit of a warning here. This cutter is extremely sharp, very sharp. If you tap your finger on it, you will walk out the door and then start bleeding. So please be very careful what you do here. My method of cleaning is we use the brush which is afforded to you when you buy your SolidScape machine. Make sure that these have a nice long bristle, that they're basically clean. If you see that they're not, what we can do is you can take a can of air, or if you're in the jewelry industry, you can go to your steam machine and just make sure all the dust is off of it. Once that, that's the only time you use this. You do not use these on, this, on these machines. You do not spray onto the machine. My favorite way of cleaning as you can see, the cutter here is it builds up right where the edge is. So what I like to do is I like to flick it off, flick, just loosen the parts. Be very careful when you're touching this. If you're afraid to touch it, get one of these. And just to hold it back. Now after you flicked it off, you see? You see we had the material there, I flicked it off. I brush it out, flick it off, brush it out, turn it, do the same thing. Take your time, don't rush. At most, something like this will take you maybe 15 minutes once you get used to it. Faster than that, trust me, in the beginning when I had the T66s, it took me 45 minutes to load the machine. These beautiful, beautiful machines, these three Zs, if it takes 10 minutes, then something's going wrong. But take your time in the beginning and learn to do the, prop, the process correctly. Flick it off, brush it down. Flick it off and brush it down. Now you're brushing it on down to the table here, which that also has to be cleaned before you put your platform on, okay? So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Now I'm brushing it off. Okay, now this is basically very clean. Now for those of you who might have a problem and there's buildup, I'm going to show you a new trick. You're going to buy what's called jewelry mold release. This is a silicone spray. Again, I reiterate, do not spray anything into this machine ever. Do not do that. What you will do is you will shake this up, you will come over, down to the floor and spritz the Q-tip. This Q-tip is a special one made for machines. It's lint free. That's very important. Now you put it into the groove and you push. Okay? And you push. Go back and forth. Be gentle. It's going to grab. Don't worry if you skip or if it goes out. Do not put your hands on it. Twist the Q-tip a little bit now and then. Okay? Now that'll get whatever build up. Now you don't do this every time. This you should do once every two months, every three months, or if necessary, if something has gone wrong and you see that it needs a little bit more of a cleaning. Okay, be very careful when you do this. Again, these cutters are extremely sharp. Now if you'll notice, you see I have a little schmutz. That's not bad, okay, but you will know when you need to do this. Now after I've done this with the Q-tip, obviously you throw away this Q-tip and never use it again. You get your next best friend, Kim Wipes. Okay, from Kim Tech. These are given to you when you buy the machine. I suggest you stay with them. Why? Because these are lint free. They're not like your regular paper towels that you use. The regular paper towels they'll flake off and get particulates into your machine, which will later on gum up your tracks. That's why you use a lint-free paper. In an emergency, here's a little clue, use coffee filters. Coffee filters are also lint-free, but 
do yourself a favor. Get a bunch of these. They're inexpensive enough. Now, I've done the Q-tip. I fold this up. Take this on the bottom. I don't want nothing being sprayed into this machine. I spray it very little, very little. I take this, not into the cutter, but away like this. Just clean it, clean it, clean it. Two or three turns, four turns, you're good. This is good. You've cleaned whatever's left. This cutter is ready to go. If we can get a close-up of the cutter, you'll see that it's very shiny and very clean. You clean around here to the opening. Go like this. Okay, make sure nothing is falling. If you see there's particulates inside, feel free to go back and just flick them out. You don't want buildup. Buildup is the key thing here. Once they build up, they will coagulate together and become like little rocks and tear your, your build parts, you know, into pieces. All right, once that's done, we check here, just do a general cleaning. Again, I'm speaking here, and it's going, it looks like it's taking a long time, but it's not. This is actually not even a five minute thing. Okay, another trick I'm going to show you is how to actually clean the rails the proper way. These rails is where the bearings run for your, your X and your Y motors, okay? So I'm going to release the magnet. Okay, so you see this is nice and smooth. You can feel it. But sometimes you get something inside these tracks right here. If something is in there, okay, it's going to go into your bearings, even though they have uh, uh, pads there to clean it as you go along. A trick to cleaning them is if you had an old T76, you take the back of the syringe, you fold up your Kim wipe, Put it into this T-shape right here. Or if you have any kind of plastic, no metal, no wood, you put your Kim wipe on it and it goes right into the groove. And you clean. And you clean. Just one, two swipes. If you feel something like an obstruction in there, take a better look, okay? You're supposed to feel nothing but nice, smooth metal. As you can see, we have a little bit of dirt that's no big deal. If it's more than this, keep cleaning. I'm going to do both the inside and the outside. Okay. Oh, and here on one of them, we had a little bit more material than I care for. Okay. So, let's check it again. It was on the inside track of this guy right at this joint right here. All right. Bring it back, check the rails, do the Y rail too, all right, now let's get this out of the way, okay, you heard that noise, that's a good noise, I want you to notice something, here at Career Casting, we always have 13 to 15 machines running at the same time, so we need to number them, why, because these plates are barcoded to each machine. So if you put this plate in another machine, that means it's uh, not going to work. The level is not going to be correct because it's going to barcode this. It's either not going to know what this plate is or it's going to use a different height and your whole build will be ruined. We have the date that we leveled the, the plate, which is very important, and the number of the machine corresponds with the number of machine we're working on. Okay? So, put that in. Make sure your tabs are back. Forward. Secure. Nice and clean. Double check. Always good to check. All right. And we're ready to go. Now that's it. Sit back and relax. To do an overview of what we just spoke about, Clean your cutter, clean the machine, check your filters, check the level of your material, build and support, check your tape, make sure everything again is clean, and you're ready to go. Hope you enjoyed this segment, and stay with us. 
There are more best practice videos in CAD and 3D printing for jewelry manufacturing to come.